All right, what's up guys? Picking up right where we left off in part one in Unity. So if you haven't watched that video on how to build a basic rollerball game, go check it out. This video, I wanna go over how to make pickups, make the player be able to interact with those pickups, and then eventually add some text that, like some UI that shows how many pickups the player has collected, and then some win text and the player has collected all the pickups they need to. So in my hierarchy, keeping things clean over here, let's go ahead and make the object that the player is going to pick up. This could be any object as long as it has a mesh to just keep things basic. I'm gonna make it a cube. Right click, create, 3D object, cube. Boom, and I'm gonna go ahead right away and name this pick up, boom. To give it a little bit of flavor, let's go ahead and rotate it by 45 degrees on each axis. 45 on the X, on the Y, on the Z. We can move it up, position it somewhere so it's not in, like interrupting our player, and boom, we've got that. Go ahead and also give this a rigid body. Add a component, physics, rigid body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check is kinematic. What is kinematic does um, means it will not just fall to the ground. It will actually stay in its place. Let's go ahead and give it its own material. Right click and I'm in my materials folder. Create material. Let's name this one pick up and to keep things in a CMYK color scheme. I am going to make this yellow. Drag and drop that onto my player or onto my pickup and boom, there we and boom. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so that was easy. Now, before I start duplicating this pickup like Matt, eventually I'm gonna want all the pickups to behave the same. And if I don't wanna have to edit the pickup every single time or every edit, if I don't wanna have to edit every single individual pickup every time I wanna change them, there's an easier way to edit all pickups, all instances, all copies of something at once. What I'm gonna do is go into that prefabs folder that we made in the first part and I'm gonna drag and drop my pickup into this prefabs folder. Drag it from the hierarchy, drop it in there. Now, a few things. One, pickup is now in blue in the hierarchy. That means that it is an instance of a prefab. What this prefab is right here, what this is, is simply a object or a asset, a piece, that I can drag in multiple copies of. So if I just drag and drop, I can add in as many of these pickups as I want. But if I wanted to change something about them, Instead of clicking on each individual pickup and changing it, all I would need to do is click on the prefab. And if I edit this, instead of editing the individual pickups, it edits them all at the same time. So first things first, let's go ahead and add a script onto them all at the same time. Again, I'm selecting the pickup from my prefabs menu, not from the hierarchy. I'm gonna add a component, scripts, and the script that I'm gonna put on it is a rotator. It's just a script that simply has it rotating on, uh, on an axis. Now, if I did that right and I hit the play button, boom, I've got four pickups in my scene and they are all rotating. Now they've got a rigid body, I can run into them, but nothing happens yet. So that is the next step that we're gonna take. Clicking on my player and going into my player controller script. Let's take a look at this. I said it a lot last tutorial, I'm gonna say it again, I am not a computer science teacher, but I know enough to be able to make some inferences. I'm able to look at something and, and begin to, to figure out what it's doing. Opening up my player controller script in Visual Studio, just like last time, let's look at a few things here. Down here it says, hey, that there's a, that there's a trigger, right? That if it runs into, if it collides with an object that is tagged pickup, this tag spelling is very important, capital P, capital U with the space. The script is looking for that exact spelling. If it does that, then it's gonna set that object to false, so it's gonna turn it off, and then it's gonna make the count equal whatever it currently was plus one. So I need some, I'm gonna need to tag things, I'm gonna need count text, and then what I see next is, hey, if the count is equal or is greater than or equal to nine, it's gonna display the win text that says you win. Okay, so I've only got four pickups in my scene, it says nine, I'm just gonna go ahead and change that to four really quick for mine, and then Command S, controls on a PC, to save that script. You go back to Unity, it updates the script really quickly, and let's start tagging things. If I go to my pickup prefab, I see that in the top of the inspector, it is currently untagged. If I click on my tags, there is no pickup tag, so let's create one. Now remember, it's looking for that exact tag. I need to click the plus sign and type it exactly as the script is looking for. Capital P, ick, space, capital U, P. That space is important. That is what the script is looking for. You, you, can't, you can't get lazy with this. You can't, you can't miss this step. Otherwise, the 
program, this code, the, it won't know what it's looking for. It won't find what it's looking for. I'm gonna click save. And then I gotta still tag it. I click on pickup, make sure that I change that tag from untagged to pickup. And it needed a trigger. It needed the collider to have a trigger. So in the box collider that came with the cube, I'm gonna check is trigger. Now, if everything is correct, per that script, when the player runs into anything tagged pickup, it will turn off that object. And boom, it worked. Who's steering this? All right, all right, all right. So let's go ahead and command S to just make sure that we're saving. I'm gonna organize my pickups into an empty, just like I did with my walls in the first part, right click, create empty. I'm gonna name this empty pick ups. And then I'm just gonna drag each one into that empty just to keep things clean. Boom. So now I gotta create some text. In video games, uh, in, visu in video games we have something called a user interface, UI, it's the little, elements, the little pieces of text and imagery that the user, the player, sees to interface and work with the game. I'm going to right click, create UI text, and that gives me a canvas and a blank text. Let's call this count text. Boom. So here's my canvas. This is ridiculous. This is not what I want at all. First thing we need to do is we need to align this new text to anchor somewhere in the player screen. In our text, we go ahead and select this right here. And if I want to anchor it in the top left, I need to press two keys while before I do this, or press and hold two keys while I click this. Those keys are Option or Alt and then Shift. And if I click that, what that's going to do is it's going to anchor the text so the player always sees it in the top left hand corner of the screen. Let's go ahead and uh, choose what it says. I'm going to say Count colon one. You, if you want to change the font outside of Arial and Unity, you need the font file, the TTF file. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, I'm going to change the color to match the color of my pickup. So let's go ahead and just make that yellow. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to make the text instead of size uh, 14, I'm going to make it, let's say 20 for now. And something that you do need to select here is the overflow. The overflow right now is set to wrap and truncate. I'm just gonna go ahead and set both of those to overflow. And what that means is the text is too big for its container, it just still shows it anyway. Cool, 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 cool. So if I hit play, we see we have count text up there in the top left-hand corner of the screen. However, it says one. So what we need to do is we need to point the player controller at the count text. We need to tell it, hey, which text are you updating? If I go to my player controller, down here, we see the two position, two little openings, one to put the count text in, one to put the win text in. I press the circle next to count text, and there it is, count text, press play. Now, count starts at zero, and if I run into a pickup, boom, the count goes to one. All right, let's go ahead and set some win text. If I uh, right click, create another UI, text, let's name this win text. And I'm gonna actually, for this one, center it. Let's go ahead and make sure it's overflow again. Let's make this text real nice and big. I'm gonna say, hey, uh, whoops. Let's make it like size 50. That's big. Let's go ahead and once again, center it. So let's click on this. Option, shift, center. So that means that it'll always be in the center, but the player controller script has it only showing up when the count is greater than or equal to four. And then let's change the color to let's make it magenta the same color as the player i hit play oh i forgot to tag it i forgot or i forgot to connect it it still just shows that's not what i wanted uh so one we need to change it to say you win hey and i need to go to my player and then set the win text click the little circle select the text that i was looking for and press the play button and now Count starts at zero. I don't see my win text. If I go around and collect each pickup, once I get to four, boom, you win, and there it goes. This is the bare basics. From here on out, the question is, well, how do you build this level out? How do you build this scene out to be more interesting, to be more than just one platform? What if there were nine or 10 or more pickups that were on other platforms and the ball has to travel there? What if you start bringing in other objects or scenes from um, from Blender or another, or another 3D modeling software as OBJs and you start decorating your scene? You start giving it a theme. 
What if you drag in an image as a material instead of just a flat uh, albedo material in Unity, right? How do you take this bare basics and begin to make it your own personalized full form game? So once again, Unity is an amazing game engine. This is literally the bare basics of making a 3D game, but Unity, the same exact software, has been used to make so, so, so many awesome, really cool games that are near and dear to me. I'm trying to keep this to be a two-parter. Maybe I'll make a three-part. Maybe I'll make a part three to show more cool things. There's some other scripts in the folder that you might want to uh, play around with and experiment on your own. But as always, thank you for watching.